Jim may no longer be walking the planet with us, but he left some indelible footprints behind. Uh, I have very good news for everybody here tonight and for all those that will follow this evening. All the influence that you heard that Jim had on the people that crossed this stage or were on the video is still available to you. When I opened this event, I mentioned that I have had a, thou a thousand hours of direct mentorship from Jim. While I got a chance to interview him, I got a chance to produce TV shows with him, sit some time backstage, have a few meals with him. 99% of all the mentorship that I got from Jim was in the form of his books and most especially his tapes and his CDs. My wife will tell you, my car does not move without gas or instructional CDs playing. <laughs> and that is how Jim Rohn mentored me and that's still all available to you. Jim leaves behind a treasure chest of all the wisdom he ever had and he ever shared. It's available to all of us. This year, I decided that it was going to be the year of Jim Rohn. I was going to study nothing but Jim Rohn in my car all year long. So I collected everything that I have, which is everything he's ever produced, and I started the process. And I've made it through the weekend event in 1999. I'm in the middle of the 2001 weekend event. 2004 is coming up, and all year long, I'm going to do nothing but study Jim. And the thing that I find amazing every time is that it's all there. All the wisdom, the half a dozen fundamental principles to be successful, whether it be in financial independence, relationships, health, well-being, communication, leadership, sales, recruiting, even lifestyle, it's all there. Everything you've ever needed to know to live at the zenith of your potential lies within that material. So this year I have also made a very personal and serious commitment to dedicate myself to championing and carrying forward Jim's legacy. As Jim kept the philosophy and teachings of Earl Schoff alive, so too do I commit to keep alive the philosophies and teachings of Jim Rohn. So in wrapping up this spectacular evening, what I want to do is pass along a few of Jim Rohn's key insights to take home with you as a gift from Jim. Jim labored long and hard to give us the gift of this principle, and here it is. If you will change, everything will change for you. Don't wait for things to change. Change doesn't start out there. Change starts within. And when you change, miraculously, your relationships, your health, your business, your children, everything else changes around you. But all change starts with you. Here's the next gift Jim wants to have you leave with. And it's wrapped in this principle. If you want to have more, we all want to have more, right? We want to have more wealth. We want to have more health. We want to have more love. We want to have more contribution. Jim says, you have to become more. See, before Jim, I think we all thought that success was something we pursue, that we chase, that we go after. But Jim corrected us on that. He said, success is not something you pursue. What you pursue eludes you it's like chasing butterflies. He said, success is something you attract by the person you become. This concept alone changed how I went for everything in life. I now realized it wasn't what I needed to do, it was who I needed to become. And that changed everything. Here's the third gift. Don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for an easier economy a different president, or more luck. Just wish you were better, and then go about the business of becoming better. And lastly, Rome told us, do the easy things. He said, what's needed to be successful is actually very easy. The simple disciplines that you need to succeed in themselves are actually all very easy. What's difficult is divorce, heart attack, bankruptcy, failure, hardship, disappointing your family. That is hard. Simple disciplines of success are easy. But Jim gives us the key. He says, do not neglect to do the easy things. See, Jim was always asked, if it's so easy, then why aren't more people successful? Jim's answer was, what's easy to do is also easy not to do. He asked us, Successful people are willing to do what unsuccessful people are not. Be successful, do the easy things. 
See, these were refreshing words. They were simple, plain, and obvious. What I loved about Jim is that he didn't traffic in the mysterious, the complex, or the unnecessarily grandiose. Just simple, stayed truth, real wisdom. And like Roan said, we all should take a course in obvious 101 and obvious 102. <laughs> this week, I listened to the end of every program Jim Rohn ever produced to try to find out what parting words he'd want to give you. So I'd like to conclude with a few words from Jim. One is this. Don't do less than your best. Always do the best you can. Have it be said of you that you did the best you could with what you had and that you used the full expansion of your mind, your heart, your soul, your touch, and your reach. Don't have your life be acceptable. Have it be memorable. See, society will let you get by with far less, but go for more. Leave behind your own footprints. Do so well that they will measure your stride to see if they can match it. Reach for a higher purpose. Go for something beyond what you thought you could do. Live with intensity. You might as well turn it up a notch or two after tonight. Why not? Invest more of who you are in all that you do. Be a little stronger. Be a little wiser. Step up your vitality, effort, and contribution. Put everything you've got into everything that you do. Develop even more vigor, more passion, more heart, and more soul. And then he warns us, let others lead small lives, but not you. Let others cry over small hurts, but not you. Let others argue over non-essentials, but not you. He said, deal in things that matter. The larger challenges, the larger opportunities. And then two is this, at the end of your life, have it be said of you, I fought a good fight. I fought for my kids. I fought for my health. I fought to protect my company. I fought for what was right. He said, if you want something of value, you have to fight to get it. But then he asks, while fighting the good fight, keep the faith. Fight for your dreams, yes. Fight for your goals, yes. Fight for your ambitions. But all the while, keep the faith with your family, your loved ones, and what's important. And then three, he said, let it be said that you developed the gift of not just helping people with their jobs, as your job would have you do. But let it be said that you helped people with their lives as your greater purpose would have you do. He asks us to touch people and teach people, not with just job skills, but with life skills. Don't just teach people how to work. Teach people how to live, how to assimilate and accumulate far greater treasures than just a paycheck. Jim gives us this promise. If you will use your gifts the gifts that you've been given, they will make a room for you. The gift of language, the gift of knowledge, the gift of discovery, the gift of caring, the gift of loving. If you use, develop, and work on your gifts, they will make an extraordinary place for you. Now I offer Jim's request of you. Pass it along. Recommend the books that have had an impact on you. Pass along the ideas that have made a difference for you. Any discovery that you make, pass it along. Don't just keep them for yourself. Share them everywhere you go with everyone you meet. Refine your skills. Bolster your passion for persuading people to see and believe in their greater potential. Help them see what they might not see on their own. Jim explained this to us. One of the greatest values in life is to help someone else. One of the greatest thrills in life is to get the opportunity to invest life into life. And then Jim's final appeal to you tonight. So, why not you? He said, if I could do it, so can you. I was a farm boy, raised in obscurity from a small village in Idaho. If I can do this, so can you. And now it's your turn. Go do it. Live an exceptional life and go out and touch someone else.